It's the My Michelle Live podcast. Looking for the God story and news of the day. My Michelle Live news and views. Here's Michelle. Hey, thank you, big voice guy. So here's a question. What if you have been lied to? That's infuriating. What if you believe that lie? What if you built your life around that lie? What if you have fought for that lie? Would you go to hell for that lie? Or would you listen to today's program and risk being offended? Here's a question, too, as well. When did offense be, become such a bad thing? Because what if in that offense, you kind of wake up a little, you question things, and either you understand that your worldview is right on the money, or you realize you may have been lied to. Vince Everett Allison is a truth teller in our age. He's the author of The Iron Triangle, Inside the Liberal Democrat Plan to Use Race to Divide Christians and America in Their Quest for Power and How We Can Defeat Them. He has recently written 25 Lies, there's those lies, exposing Democrats' most dangerous, seductive, damnable, destructive lies and how to refute them. And he's the man behind a new documentary, Will You Go to Hell for Me? Wow, okay, the man who pulls no punches, this is going to be a good one to David. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. You have a background that is solid in faith. You were gro- you grew up with Christ as your Savior, a biblical worldview. And that biblical worldview, worldviews are something we talk about on this show, Vince. They're vitally important. If we're afraid of being offended then we don't challenge our worldview. And if God in the Bible said, hey, test me, try me, prove me, he's not afraid of a little challenge. Why should we be? We, we've been told by these people on the, in the Democrat Party that there's some type of severability between our vote and our walk with God. They have convinced us that they're more powerful than God. There are many people that I've talked to on the Democratic Party side that says that because they believe that a Republican or a conservative is a racist, that they'll vote for a Democrat, even though they know that these people murder the children, that they castrate little boys and call them little girls, and give double, double mastectomies to little girls and call them little boys. It's a narcissism. It's all about me. And when you ask the person whether or not they believe in something, forget what they say, you watch what they do, and they'll tell you whether they believe in it or not. As you said, I was born on a cotton plantation in Haywood County, Tennessee. My father was a sharecropper. He brought us out of poverty by working hard, believing in Jesus Christ, and we started a gospel singing group called the Ellison Family. Went all around the South singing good gospel music, and this is where I, I learned about the black church. And I started working, after college, I started working as a correctional officer. And I saw them locking up all these black men, and I thought we'd overcome. So I started asking these black, the black intelligentsia, why all these young black men being locked up? And they said, ooh, these evil, rich, white conservatives, they hate black people. So I started a nonprofit, went down into the black community, and I didn't see any evil, rich, white conservatives anywhere. You see a leprechaun before you saw one. But what I did see was a bunch of black Democrats making money off of the chaos. And they were the black preacher, the black politician, and the black civil rights organizer. And my first book was about those people. And I exposed them as conduits between rich, white liberals and the black community. And their job was to keep us under control. They turned the <clears throat> black inner city into another cotton plantation for the Democrat Party, where they keep the people demoralized, beaten down, under control so they'll vote for the Democrats to keep them in power. And in my movie, Will You Go to Hell for Me, I asked that question. The Democratic Party, again, has become so evil, it's become so perverted that to vote for it, you're putting your soul in danger. Us Christians believe in hell. We believe in it. The Bible speaks more about hell than it does about heaven. And in Romans 14 and 12, it tells us you'll be, you'll have to stand in front of God and be held accountable for your life. And if we're voting to allow people to abort children up to the ninth month, which is murder, to castrate little boys, to child abuse children, to take away the guns for people to live in war zones, to allow sex trafficking across the border, 
you know you're doing this and you're not going to be held accountable for it if you believe that you're a fool. So my documentary talks about this, talks about the history of it, and it holds Christians accountable. And I'm warning them that they've been that the Democratic Party set a trap for them, and they better look out or they'll wake up in hell. There's a lot to unpack today, and it is vitally important. Of course, we can't get to all of it, so we're going to recommend your books and this documentary. Yet, in this world, we have been deemed a post-Christian nation. You hear Mm. now open mocking of things like thoughts and prayers. And it occurred to me how funny it is that you can mock thoughts and prayers, but putting a sign on a school that says, gun safe zone, isn't that their own thoughts and prayers, their own prayerful wish that if I put this magic sign up, no harm will come to these children? The Democrat Party knows that. They are their evil institution. They always have been. Since well, their inception in 1800, that. they've been the party of slavery from 1800 to 1860. From 1860 to 1865, they were the party of the Confederacy and the succession. And from 1865 to 1970, they were the party of Jim Crow. Castrations, murders, rapes, uh, extra constitutionalism, you name it, they did it. If the devil walks this earth, he lays his head at the DNC. It has always been an evil institution, and it still is. Now they've gone into child, now they've gone into murder, child sexual grooming, having these drag queens coming into school, shaking their behinds, grown men shaking their behinds in the in, in the faces of children. This isn't politics anymore. We no longer have policy disagreement with these people. These people are functionally insane. This is not anymore a argument between right and wrong. It's an argument between sanity and insanity. And the Biden administration has hired these crazy people like this. Sam Brinkman guy that walks around in a dress, high heels, bald head, with lipstick on his face. This guy that works in the Health and Human Affairs Department walks around in a dress. This Levine guy, a dress in high heels, saying he's a woman. Pete Buttigieg, openly married to a man, adopts a child, and strips on a false breast and feeds his, 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 his adopted child with it. These people are crazy, and we need to stop conceding ground to them. Like you said, we've allowed, we conceded our workplaces to them. They said that our crosses offended them. We left. We, we conceded our schools to them. They said our prayers offended them. We left. We conceded our courthouses to them. They said that the Ten Commandments offended them. We left. And then they commandeered a religious symbol of ours, the rainbow. And now everywhere you go, they have their symbol where we can see the ground. Thomas Mann said that tolerance is a crime when applied to evil. And we've been tolerant of these people too long. My tolerance has ended. I'm pushing back. I want your viewers to go to will you go to hell for me.com. Will you go to helpme.com? Look at the trailer, and I want you to view what these people have said about this movie. It's one of the most powerful documentaries and movies you've ever seen. And when you buy it, share it with your friends, because it's, it is a warning that the Democratic Party has set a trap. It is a party that is now controlled by a cabal of perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots. And if you support this party, you're putting your soul in jeopardy of hell. Let's talk about the people we, the people who have been lied to, why is it that we believe the lie? Within the black community, there's a lot of people who are woke, but there's a lot of people who are waking up. What has it been about some of the lies that you have talked about in your books and in this movie that has kind of lured us? The Democratic Party is very crafty, Miss Ruth. Frederick Douglass talked about how they used the black preacher as a conduit during slavery to keep the black people in control, telling them they're supposed to obey their masters and not rebel and not fight, and a good slave is the one who obeys their master. When the Marxists in, in the USSR decided they want to take over America, they needed to infiltrate the country, and they wanted to infiltrate the black community. This is documented. This isn't hyperbole. This is fact. I have this all documented in my documentary. And they didn't have much success until they... Uh, number one communist in America. He was being bankrolled by the Soviet Union. He invaded Rustin, commandeered the civil rights community. They bankrolled it out of Moscow. And then they went into the black church. Martin Luther King Jr. was excommunicated from the black church in 1961 because he tried to take it over for the civil rights movement. Yeah, he started a fight on the floor of the National Baptist Convention, killed a preacher on the floor trying to take over the convention for the civil rights movement. Because, and when they failed on the vote, Bishop Jackson had him excommunicated. So King started his own religion. Yes, the religion is called the National Baptist, the Progressive National Baptist Convention. 
That's the sect that Warfield Warnock belongs to. And this is an apostate section. Martin Luther King Jr. was also was the first recipient of the Margaret Sanger Award in 1966. Yes, he was given the award for having us up abortion clinics and the and, and, and inside the black community. Margaret Sanger started as the whole movement of eugenics and the black people were inferior need to be destroyed. And they, the black preacher, helped us set it up. He was behind the man out clause or the man in house clause and welfare. Lyndon Jackson and, and Lyndon Johnson and Patrick Moynihan told them we have to put the black man back in charge of his family. And they wanted to put it into welfare, that they were going to set up the welfare state to try to help the black man become head of his family. King and the civil rights community said no. And instead, they demanded that the man in house quality put in welfare, where the only way a woman could get help is that the man be gone. And in one generation, we went from having 80% of our children being born in wedlock to 80% being born out of wedlock. Why? The civil rights movement and the black preacher and the black politician and the black civil rights worker. They are the reason. He has a lot of power. So he'll get up there on, on Sunday morning. He'll talk about fighting, talking about killing, talking about drugs, transgenderism. But then he'll tell you to vote for the very same Democrat who are bringing it to the black community. Why? Because he gets paid. He's a crook. He's a liar. He's an apostate. And this is not all of them. You have a few good ones out there, but they're very few. Jesus' disciples asked him, how will you know a false prophet? He said, you will know him by the fruits that they bear. You will not get good fruit from a bad tree, a bad fruit from a rotten tree. Each fruit and each tree will be after its own. So when you look at Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights movement, and you look at the black community now, you ask me this, you ask me this question, is the fruit good or is the fruit bad? If the fruit is bad, the tree has to be bad. And the tree is the black preacher, the black civil rights organizer, and the black, the black politician. And they're the ones that are choking the life out of the black community because they are conduits between the Democrat Party, which is an evil institution. That's the answer to your question. The lies are believed because they are told by these three entities, and they carry a lot of weight in the black community. And black people don't really read their Bibles that much. They listen. And we and these people know that. They put it in the music. Look at what they've done. They take Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Cardi B, and elevate them in the black community now. Yeah, they invite them to the White House. They let them sing at the Super Bowl. Cardi B was went down and gave an uh, interview with Joe Biden, and they say the N-word, the B-word, the W-word, they talk about killing, molestation, you name it. And Barack Obama and the Democrats elevate these people amongst our children. And this is why they act like animals whenever you put them together in close proximity with each other. It enrages me, but that's who they are. And my film wakes you up to this fact, that they are trying to destroy us, and they're proud of what they're doing. And we need to wake up and turn our backs on these people. Now, there is a contingent of America that buys into the, the ideas that are perpetuated by the Democrat Party, which is part of what we're talking about today. And it's because they desire to take care of people. They, there's been this idea that Republicans, for example, they're all about taking care of business. When we look beyond the surface, I think everybody knows, all right, that's, it goes both ways. There's no, it, there's no political institution that's perfect. We'll just put that out there. But I think on, on the streets, the everyday people, we want to be kind. That's part of who we are as Americans. We want to be kind to people. We feel like we want to take care of people. However, you point out in your book, in this movie, that our kindness turns to cruelty when our kindness isn't built on a proper worldview. Of course, you can look around you. If, if the Democratic Party is the black man's friend, I hate to see his enemy. We're at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. Everyone, a, an, an illegal can cross Rio Grande, come over here today and make more money than the, a black man whose family has been over here for 22 generations. Isn't that amazing? It's not the only school. amazing, Vince, but it's also sad that's an example of kindness turning to cruelty you can come across the border and if you oppose it you're a racist but 
we have human trafficking and slavery that is at a higher level than it ever has been in human history. Apparently, our kindness doesn't extend to the little baby boys and girls, the little children as young as three or four years old that are sold into slavery for use by perverted men. We don't care about that. We don't talk about that, and it certainly isn't broadcast on the evening news. You have to watch alternative sources like this in order to hear about it. Yeah, it's the kindness that a battered wife, a battered, hu- a battered wife gets from her husband. The kind of mm-hmm. kindness that the slave master gave to his slave. I'm keeping you on this plantation to take care of you. It's the k- kind of kindness that when you watch the Hunchback of Notre Dame, John Claude Frodo told the Hunchback, "I keep you here because you know you're ugly, you're deformed. They hate you, and I'm here, and I keep you here to protect you." These people aren't mm-hmm. kind. These people are evil, and they and you know that something is evil because when they give it to you, it's rotten. But the black community, the one thing they've done to us is something that the that the old Soviet Union talked about and Mao talked about. You have to demoralize your population and the people that you have under your control. You can't let them rise so high. You have to beat them down. You have to make them feel like they do not deserve anything better. You've seen a woman that's been battered. She gets away from this man, she'll go back to another man that's battering her. People that will not leave the ghettos because they don't think they deserve any better. People will not exercise. See, hell is a choice. C.S. Lewis said it was a choice, and it is a choice. The same way that slavery is a choice. And I talk about this inside my documentary, and I want your viewers to go to willyougotohellforme.com. Willyougotohellforme.com. And look at the trailer, buy this DVD, or buy this or stream this video. It'll change your life. But I talk about this. Our people have been so demoralized. They've been so beat down that when you go to them and ask them, man, what made you? grab that first block of crack cocaine and smoke it. Then my life is so bad, man. I'm just trying to escape from it. This is the life that the Democrat Party has built for these people. It's a dystopia. It's a life that you and I don't even understand. We don't understand how people could live like that. They live that way because they think they deserve no better. See, I cannot be oppressed. Why can't I be oppressed? Because I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. I cannot be a victim. Nobody is superior to me. They want to talk about white privilege. Yeah, it is a privilege to be white. But it's also a privilege to be black. And I've had my privileges too. I had two good parents. I have a great family. I was born in a great country. It's a privilege to be an American. And the greatest privilege is the privilege to be an heir of Jesus Christ. And I'm not giving up one of my privileges for anybody. So all of these black politicians, the black preachers, screaming victimization and oppression. They are liars and they are apostates. You cannot be a Christian and be a victim. Let me tell you how many Christians knowingly voted for the Democratic Party. How many Christians voted for them knowing that they were going to castrate little boys, cut off the breast of little girls. How many Christians voted for them knowing that they were going to hurt the children in the womb up to the ninth month? I'll tell you how many. Zero. You cannot be a Christian and vote to murder a child. Jesus said that if anybody harms one of these little ones, it's better that a millstone be tied around their neck and they'd be thrown into the sea. I hope these Democrats can swim. Oof. And you think about something that you brought up, Vince, is it's as though there's an addiction. And when you're addicted, you don't see the world clearly. An example, years ago, do you remember the March for Science? And the Democrat Party, in particular, billed themselves as the party of science. If you drive down the freeway on I-5 in Seattle, you'll even see this garish house building and it has a big sign that everyone can read science is god and yet if that's the case they're not listening to even their god very well because they have become the party of ignore science biological men and dressing as women and saying i'm female and i'm menstruating is just a name and not only that it's dangerous we've talked a bit about the bud light controversy events and as a woman in broadcasting i've faced 
discrimination in reporting sports. You can't know anything. You're just a little lady. You can sit there and look pretty and let the big boys talk. I've had to fight against that. And then you have a man pretending to be a woman saying, oh, it's March Madness. I think it has something to do with sports and perpetuating a stereotype that's dangerous. It's dangerous to women like me in my career. So it seems as though we've gotten away from science in our community, in, in our country, much like an addiction, we continue to buy into the lie. If you, if you read your history, this was prophesized by George Orwell in his book, 1984. Oh, wow. yeah. It'll get to a point where the state will tell us that two plus two equals five. And we will have to accept it because their logic necessitated that we get to that point. Why? Because they have no standard. It was Nietzsche that said that there's no truth. Truth is subjective. It's no objective truth. So when you deal with that concept, inevitably you're going to get to a point where a man can say he's a woman, a woman can say she's a man, a dog can say it's a cat, but it's chaos. See, you and I have a standard. Our standard is the Bible. We can always say when somebody asks us, why is this? We say, because God said it. That's it. And there was a time when they said God has spoken and the church said amen. Now we say God has spoken and the church says why? God has spoken and the Christian says amen. That's what God said, that's what I do. Why do you do it? God said it. No, not now, see? So you get into this concept of objective objective truth, something that the left has always been involved in from Nietzsche to Sigmund Freud, you go on down the line with it. And you inevitably end at a crazy conclusion because you're saying nothing is absolute. You've heard these children talk about my own truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. I am the way. He said, this is it. It stops here. They don't believe that. So when you go past that, anything is possible. Anything is real. And it's dangerous. But it's not only dangerous, it's insane. To have no objective truth, to have no standards, means you live in a world where any and everything goes. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in the Constitution. What stops them from killing somebody? We say our Bible says it's wrong. What stops them? Nothing. This is why Hitler could put six million Jews in an oven. There's no objective truth. This is why all of these dictators, from Mao to Mussolini to Stalin, could do what they did. This is why Castro and Che Guevara can line people up against walls and blow their brains out when they took over. There's no objective truth. There is no law. We need to be careful and understand who these people are. They are nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. They're not new. All we have to do is look at our history. Look at Mao. Look at Stalin. Look at Castro. This is who they are. These people are their heroes. You'll see them walking around with a Che Guevara shirt on right now. If Che Guevara was a mass murderer, this is what they will do to us mm-hmm. if they get true. power. This they will, they've already said that they're going to abort children up to the ninth month, that men and women don't exist anymore, that women, men can dress as a woman and then participate in, 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 in inside of women's sports. This is the beginning. And we better wake up, and Christians better stop supporting this party. So I'm telling all of these black Christians, and 90% of them that vote for the Democratic Party, you better check yourself. Because God, Jesus said, this time will come, where the wheat will be separated from the chaff. My children, hear my voice. He's calling. Are you going to stay with your master? And he said, nobody can serve two masters, no man. You have to love one and hate the other. And right now, people are choosing their master. I stick with Jesus Christ. I hope these other Christians come back home also. If not, they'll wake up in hell. Vince, we've talked about the evils of the Democrat Party, but the Republican Party is not a perfect party. So you're not perpetuating that they're the party that Jesus put on the throne, so to speak. And I want no, to because, uh, and I think that I want to make that clear to our viewers because sometimes when you're fuzzy, clear. that's what people will hear. Oh, that's what I want to make clear. Yeah, even though the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, is not perfect. They do have a stipulation in their platform that says life begins at conception, whereas we have these Democrats say that you can have abortion up to the time of the child's birth. They do have a stipulation in their platform that says we have a right to defend ourselves, and the Democrats do not. They do have a stipulation that says that they believe in God, and the Democrats do not. When you And the reason why I talk about the Democrat Party so much is the same reason that, and not the Republican Party, it's the same reason why I don't talk about the Labor Party in Great Britain. The Republican Party has no control in the black community. The Republican Party is not the problem. The Republican Party says, we'll leave you alone. 
The Democrat Party is against school choice. The Republican Party says, I think you should need to take your child out of a failing school and put it in a school that matches the ideas and concept of the parent. Democrats against it. The Republicans say that we will let you defend yourself in a war zone in the inner city. Democrats party says no. The Republicans say we want to seal the border and make sure that people come to this country, come illegally, keep the fentanyl and the sex trafficking out. Democrats won't do it. The Republicans say that we believe that a man's a man, a woman's a woman. Right now, the Democrats have voted against the bill that the Republicans put up in the state of Virginia that said that if a boy goes to school, a child goes to school and starts transitioning, the teacher is supposed to let the parent know. The Democrats killed it. Regular, everyday people, like a lot of people in my audience, look, we just want to raise our families. We just want to enjoy our sporting events without the politics. We just yes. want to live and let live, pretty much. But we may agree with some of the things that you've said. We're may, maybe even willing, if we don't, to, to look into it and challenge it. But we don't want to say anything because, my gosh, we get shouted down. We get canceled. We get threatened. We're on social media, and every manner of vile thing is said against us. We're deplatformed. We risk lo- not only losing jobs, but once we've lost our jobs, realizing it, it, you you probably know this when you're looking for work there are many companies i'm in the seattle area so there's lots of them that mm. will ask your pronouns they'll ask if you ad- adhere to and are ready to toe the line with kind of a more woke ideal ideologue so of course we don't want to say anything we just want to live leave us alone but we've almost gotten past that point and that's where a voice that's willing to not pull any punches is so important. As you can see, I'm a black conservative, Christian conservative here in America. Ed, I think it was Evelyn Burke that said that the easiest way for evil to continue for good people to do nothing. They want to scare us. But 365 times in the Bible, God commands us to fear not. That's one day, that's one command for every day of the year. 365 times he commands that we fear not. I can't be afraid of these people. God, God, the Bible says God didn't give you the spirit of fear. Fear comes from the devil. And I cannot fear a man in high heels with lipstick on that wants to molest children. He doesn't scare me. I scare him. They don't have me on CNN and MSNBC, even though I've sold over 100,000 books in the last two years. And even though I have a hit documentary, they won't have me on because they know they can't beat me in a debate. How are they going to beat me when I say I'm not inferior to anyone because I'm a child of God? I cannot be a victim or oppressed because I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. How can they break that argument? How can they look at me and tell me they have a right to come here and castrate my grandson or cut off the breast of my daughter? How can they look at me and tell me that? See, I had to go deep into this thing, into Martin Luther King Jr. and what he did to the minds of black people and America with his I Have a Dream speech. I went to the Lorraine Motel and I saw him give this speech. They were looping it. And he said something that I heard a thousand times, but this time I heard it differently. This is when Kaepernick and all these guys were kneeling. And he said in the speech, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. That is a lie. I was born free. Hmm. He told us to come to Washington and ask the white man for our freedom. When Jesus Christ said, I've made you free. Do you see what that did? <clears throat> she was a master. Who are you going to believe, me or Jesus Christ? I want to dig deep into what you just said. That is a very important point. If you are not someone that adheres to a biblical worldview, you're just looking, questioning, searching, whatever it is that you're doing, I want you to understand something. Salvation is free. That's right. That salvation is free. And the benefits of that salvation is just something that we say, I, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we claim that and we walk in it. That's part of what salvation is. Your citizenry in the United States of America, you have been given freedom. It is Mm -hmm. part of our constitution. It's part of who we are. We are a free people. We just have to claim it. And so the, right. the subtle thing that we're hearing here from my f- new friend Vince is that we're saying we're an oppressed people. We are an enslaved people. We are, we are a victimized people. No, you are a free people. Get up and walk in it. No longer a victim. Walk in that freedom. And that's, 
the difference. Who wants to be a perpetual victim? Be at liberty and walk in that liberty while we still have it because that future is questionable at this point. Vince? Yeah, yeah. I always ask the question when somebody comes to me and say, how can you say that slave is a choice? I always throw it back at them. I said, which is worse, the man that owns a slave or a man that allows himself to become one? No. You have the spirit of Esau where he sold his birthright for a bowl of pottage. And your freedom Ooh. is more important than your birthright. Whoa. You don't get my freedom. Boom. It becomes a death fight. When you come to a wild animal and try to take his freedom, he looks at you and say, I'm not going to die for my freedom. You're going to die for trying to take it. It's not live free or die. It's live free or kill. You're not taking my freedom. So the day that you give up your freedom without death, you've acquiesced to slavery. You've chosen slavery. Because even in our death, we're still free because we go to Jesus Christ. You will not make me a slave. Period. I refuse. You will not do it. You cannot oppress me. I refuse. And when we stand like that and when we look at these people as free men, and Martin Luther King Jr. took our Christ likeness away from us when he said that Christianity was a religion of nonviolence. That is a lie. It's a religion of non-aggression. It's no virtue in me walking down the street seeing a young girl getting raped or accosted and saying, since I'm a Christian man, I can't do nothing. No. My job is to grab the guy, make him leave that woman alone, whoop him till he stopped fighting, hold him for the police, and then when they come get him, testify at his trial. There's no virtue in me as a Christian man allowing people to come in and take my property and rape my wife and my children at night because I'm nonviolent. No. It's a religion of non-aggression. My job is to love you. I don't care how you feel about me. As long as you don't put your hands on me, we're fine. But if you do, I'll whoop you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and Martin Luther King Jr. walked around telling us to lay down and let ourselves get beaten. Took our Christ likeness away from us. Took our manhood away from us. Asking us, a man like me, to walk around and ask a racist not to judge me by the color of my skin? What kind of manhood is that? No. I don't care how you view the color of my skin. If you don't like me, that's your problem. You put my, your hands on me, you're going to have another problem. Just like me. Underestimate me at your peril. That's your problem. But as far as me walking around begging you to love me, man, you can cancel that. I'm supposed to be concerned with one person, and that's how God views me. We walked around trying to get white people to view us differently instead of God. And look at where it led us. Hmm. To the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America where we hate one another. We kill each other on the industrial level. We're not respected. We're pitied. Our politicians are a bunch of liars and beggars walking around screaming, no justice, no peace. It's supposed to be a man of God. When Jesus Christ said, I, your, my peace, I leave with you. I will give you peace that transcends all understanding. You don't have to ask man for anything. I got you. And you got preachers out there marching in the street, crying for reparations, asking the government to take care of them and their children. They're liars. This is why we've been taught an apostate, false religion. And it has to be confronted. The same way Jesus Christ confronted the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he told the Jews, you know what your problem is? It ain't wrong. It's those Pharisees and those Sadducees, liars, generation of vipers, hypocrites. And then they looked at him and say, he got to die. That's why they killed him. And this is the problem in the black community and America now. Our religious leaders are a bunch of liars, hypocrites, and apostates. They've been teaching false religion for a very long time, and there's too few of them that are willing to stand up and tell the truth. We still have a few of them out there, very few. But we have to start confronting these liars in our midst, and the black community is filled with them. Filled with them. Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, all of these apostate preachers are always marching, screaming for the government to come in and do for us what well, Jesus said he do, and he's told us this, I'm not going to compete. If you want them to be your master, let them be your master. Look at what you get. And this and is where, at the bottom of everything because of it. This is what we've yes. gotten in America. Final question, and then we're going to talk about how people can get this documentary and what some of the solutions are. But advice for the everyday person in finding their voice. You're outspoken. You're bold. You're not afraid to speak your mind. But everyday people in America 
whose voices are important. Everyone's voice is important. I can reach people you can't. The person listening right now, you can reach people that Vince and I can't. So how do we find our voice? They've convinced us that there is, that, that our happiness is outside of us instead of inside of us. They tell you there's material things. They're telling you about how good you look. They're telling you about what political parties in power. No, it's about your belief in Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, man, mankind is suicidal. We've seen all of these rich people that think they have everything that own drugs and committing suicide. Why? Because they don't have Jesus Christ. I tell them my happiness comes with inside of me. My old friends see me and say, Vince, you're the same way as you were when you were 20 years old. No matter how much money I get, no matter how many books I sell, no matter how many documentaries I make, Vince is going to be happy. I can be in my million-dollar house on a lake on a golf course, or I can be in a trailer. My happiness is in here, inside of me. Once you find Jesus Christ and you find your happiness and you understand who you are, that's all the advice I can give you. It has always been inside of me. I do not fear man. He can't do anything to me. He can't do anything to me unless God allows it, and then it'll be okay. I walk in America proudly as an American. Why? Because I've earned my place here. This is my home, and I don't ask permission in my house. I cannot be oppressed. I cannot be a victim. I walk around with that type of courage because I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, how can you walk around afraid? How can you walk around in fear? How can you walk around being concerned about what tomorrow is going to bring? Everything's going to be all right. These people are already defeated. They don't even know it. They're already done. And we'll be victorious. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And as you're watching, listening, or viewing, know that if the light comes on and you're ready to go from woke to awake, that there is hope for you and there is joy and there is salvation. I want to thank you for being part of the program today, watching, listening, or viewing, and encourage you to go, will you go to hellforme.com. You will find links everywhere you're listening, viewing, watching, or reading this program. Vince, you've given a lot of your time today and a lot of your passion, and I am so grateful. God bless you in your journey. Thank you for doing what you were called to do. Thank you for finding your voice and sharing your voice with the world. We need it, and we need your voice as well as you're watching, listening, or viewing. God bless you, Vince, and thank you. Thank you so much. I know that you're in the den of devils up there in Washington. I've heard what they've done, how they <laughs> have decided they were going to go into homes and take transgender and, and make children transgender and all this food and this up there. You stand strong. God will redeem you, and he'll redeem everyone up there that believes. Don't let these people turn you away. This is the test. You'll be victorious in the end. I have no doubt. I love it. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. More news and views at mymichellelive.com.